Hello everyone, welcome to Like a Raisin in the Sun, a small game created as part of Indie Speedrun, a 48-hour game jam contest held by The Escapist. This game was created by Wormwood Studios, the people behind an adventure game you may have heard of called Primordia. The description for this game is simply this. A robot dreams of baking cupcakes, but is too small. And that was all I needed to get me to play it. And well, the wonderful art also helped. From what I've seen so far, it looks to be sort of like a visual novel. At least that's the closest kind of genre that I could stuff it into. Links to where you can play this, as well as the other games from the Indie Speedrun, will be in the description. Alright, that's about all I want to mention before I get going. Other than two small things. One, the art is wonderful. It really is. It's this, it's this wonderful sort of like steampunkish look to it. You have this kind of glowy, sort of low-resolution display with this text. And this entire thing just... I mean, look at how the light flickers and how kind of metallic and yet sort of organic the whole thing looks. It, the feeling I get from this is just... The feeling I get from it is like this whole thing was just cobbled together from spare parts and barely works. I love it. It's just... It's beautiful. Also, I should mention that this game actually has voice acting, which surprised the hell out of me. To see voice acting, and not to mention good voice acting, is pretty damn rare in a game made in 48 hours. It's really astounding. So, and as a result of the voice acting, I'm probably not going to be talking all that much. Okay, so let's get going. Cooking is an art. Baking is a science. Catalog, King Arthur Flower, circa 1960. So it seems like you click certain words and those link you to other passages. So let's click on baking. Once there was a little robot who wanted to bake cupcakes, but it was too small to work in the bakery. So you have these branching paths where you can choose where you want to go. Do I want to go with small, too small, or do I want to go with cupcakes? And by the way, in case you didn't notice, there's actually icons that show up here that change depending on what passage you're reading. Um, let's, go with, let's go with small. Too small, the immense baker had said with a shake of his ponderous head. A broad wave of his arm encompassed the machinery of the back kitchen. The gleaming devices within whirred and churned and flamed. Come back when you're bigger, he snickered. I already feel sad for the little robot. He just wants to make cupcakes. How cruel can you be? Also, where did the music go? This little dial here allows you to control the volume of the music, but for some reason it's disappeared. I didn't mute the... no, I didn't mute the game. Strange. Bigger. Unlike the fleshy baker, the small robot could not just grow. Unchanging, it waited outside the bakery, watching the baker's wife predictably arrange fresh-made delights in the glass cases, watching the same customers predictably arrive and predictably place their orders, watching the predictable passage of hours and days and seasons. It's got such a morose feel to it, doesn't it? This little tiny robot just... Watching, wishing that it could do things that it can't. Tell me about the customers. There was old Maurice working his way through the glass case from left to right, then back again. A fat woman, nameless, shapeless, gluttonous, always feigning indecision and even abstention. And Clara, the girl arriving every two weeks after exam days for her reward. Tell me about Maurice. Did Maurice refuse to choose, rejecting free will? Or was he trapped in an endless loop? Was he defiant or pathetic? Defiant. The old man's defiance was isomorphic to a certain impulse in the robot's circuitry. Restriction could be overridden. The robot could choose to act or to remain. Let's act. 
The small robot was not too small to bake a cupcake, nor were the obstacles before it too large. Within its unremarkable shell were special tools designed for just such obstacles. The robot entered the kitchen and baked to the sound of sirens. Amid the carnage, it left behind a cupcake, and it was beautiful. <laughs> and that's the end. <laughs> okay, so does this have multiple endings? I'm suspecting it does. Okay, let's see what other pathways there are. Let's let the, let the credits play out. Thanks for playing. Thank you for making it. But I'm not done yet. System terminated. Is the game window going to close? Don't close. Don't close. No, 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 no. The window just closed. <laughs> okay, let's start it up again. There we go. And there's the music playing that for some reason stopped before. Okay, baking. Once there was a little robot who wanted to bake cupcakes. Let's go for cupcakes. But it was too small. Why cupcakes? Who can say? The robot's logic was a product of human programming subject to human error. It was not designed to make cupcakes, but it was built that way. Tell me about humans. Yes, a human had built the small robot. Perhaps one just like the baker, who, with a shake of his ponderous head, declared too small. A broad wave of his arm encompassed the machinery of the back kitchen, the gleaming devices within whirred and churned and flamed. Come back when you're bigger, he snickered. Tell me about the devices. Unlike the robot, these machines were built to bake. They worked with ceaseless efficiency without distraction. They neither wanted to make cupcakes, nor wanted to do anything else. They simply were. And what they were, the small robot could never become. Wanted. Why cupcakes? Who can say? The oh. robot's logic was a problem. Now we're back here. Human Hold on, let's get back there. Human. human. Yes, a human had built the small robot. Devices. Unlike the robot, these Speak machines up. were built to be. Unlike the fleshy baker, the small robot could not just grow. Unchanging, it waited outside the bakery. Right, let's go for the wife this time instead of the customers. One morning, the baker's wife took pity on the small robot and brought out a cupcake. Red velvet. She did not understand. The cupcake sat on the curb beside the robot. Pigeons approached cautiously, uncertain whether the robot would defend the food. Defend? From within the small robot's unremarkable shell, its special tools emerged. The pigeons were unprepared. Their bodies, a small warning, nevertheless offended the baker's sense of sanitation. He emerged, face red, jowls trembling, fists clenched red and white. Go away, he roared. Away. The robot withdrew silently, too small to protest. The cupcake it left behind was already decomposing. Oh my god, that is so sad. Okay, well, I think I'm gonna end it there. <laughs> or should I? Should I go for another one? Let's go, f let's go for another one. Let's get one more. Hold on just a second. There we go. Okay, gonna just kind of like speed run through this, so hold on just a second. Once there was a little robot. Too small, the immense baker had said with a shake of his head. Unlike the fleshy baker, the small robot could not just grow. There was old Maurice working his It was certain that Clara would pick a chocolate cupcake with rainbow sprinkles. It was also certain that the day would come when Clara failed to meet the arbitrary benchmark against which she was measured. Then, like the small robot, she would be kept outside forever. Arbitrary. The baker's rule lacked logic. 
the small robot was not too small. Inside its unremarkable shell were the tools to prove it. The proof was direct and bloody, the results indisputable. Inside the bakery, the robot baked to the sound of sirens. The cupcake it left behind was beautiful. And we're back here, <laughs> with a scene of carnage, but a beautiful cupcake. Okay, let's leave it there. I don't want to probe too far. Wow, that was... That was really good. It, oh my god. The mood of it is just wonderful. Again, this... This, like, cyberpunkish sort of panel with everything glowing and flickering. Combined with this, like... Very low-resolution looking sort of... Glowing sort of display. With this dial that you could even fiddle with. It's... And the text and the voice acting. It's like this sad, repressed little robot that just wants to bake a cupcake. It's so strange and yet... Beautiful and sad and disturbing. To think that such a small game... Such an absolutely tiny game about something so strange as a robot wanting to bake a cupcake could be so full of different feelings, but it is. I feel sad for this little robot that just wants to bake cupcakes. But it also seems to turn into a murderer, finally breaking free of its shell in an explosion of violence. Or if, uh, if you get a different ending like the last one I got, you just leave the cupcake forever, and I guess probably never chase your dreams of finally baking a cupcake. Like, imagine that. The previous ending, where the red velvet cupcake was left there, already decomposing. I just picture this little tiny robot. This little tiny robot just click, clack, click, clack, walking away, sadly, silently. Behind it, the cupcake is just sitting there. Just going to be eaten by birds, or stepped on, or taken away by some rodent, or eaten by ants, or just decompose if nothing takes it. That decomposing cupcake, and the little robot just slowly walking away. It's so unbelievably sad. <laughs> and the voice acting was really good. It perfectly fit the mood. Just the strange... Everything about it. The look of it, the text, and the voice acting all combined in this just very... sort of surreal and yet somehow... sad and sort of repressive mood. Like nothing... Just the way it was written is makes it sound like nothing ever works out. Like when it described Clara as... one day, something like, you know, one day she'll... She'll fail to meet the arbitrary standards imposed on her. Everything's written from a perspective of, like, hopelessness and just sadness. And to think, all that came out of a game that I just played for, like, 10 to 13 minutes. That's amazing. I really liked it. That was wonderful. Okay. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed my playthrough of Like a Raisin in the Sun.